Hello, this is Barry Nirmal. I'm a computer guru, having spent my whole life in computing. You can find my books on computing by searching Google for quote, Barry Nirmal books, unquote. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe link below. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul Nirmal. In today's video, I'll be discussing some tips and tricks on how to make your computing experience safer and more secure as a Windows 10 user. This video is divided into four parts. In part one, I'll be taking a high level overview of Windows Defender. This is Windows 10 own built-in antivirus solution. Microsoft has been working hard on their own antivirus solutions for the past 15 years and has come a long way. In fact, now, they are able to match, if not exceed, many of their competitors' paid offerings. Best of all, Windows Defender is completely free and included on every Windows 10 installation. In part two, I'll show you the dangers of fake download buttons. These can be found if you're trying to find useful utilities to boost the productivity of your Windows 10 PC. When you click on these fake download buttons, you may think you're downloading the software that you're looking for, but instead, you'll often end up installing malware on your PC instead. In part three, we'll be taking a look at these fake download buttons again, but this time going to a more seedy corner of the internet. In this case, a website where you can download free movies and music, thus engaging in copyright infringement. This is something I don't condone in any way, shape, or form, but I include it because many computing users still go to these kind of websites. In the last part of this video, I'll be showing you how to create a strong password using a special website which can gauge the strength of your password simply by typing it in, thus making it as hard as possible for a hacker to crack it. And so keeping whatever your password is protecting, like your Windows PC login, important financial accounts, etc., safe and sound. So without further ado, let's go over to my Windows 10 PC and get started. All right, I'm at my Windows 10 desktop and I'm going to begin by launching the Windows Security app by going to the Start menu and typing in Windows Security. And the app's been opened up. And in front of us, we can see we have multiple tabs to choose from and categories. In this video, I'm just going to focus on virus and threat protection and app and browser control. I'm first going to click on virus and threat protection. It says there's no action needed, but I'm going to click on it anyway and see what we can find. So saying no current threats have been found and the last scan on my PC was done very recently. If you have another antivirus software installed, you would see it here. You could also find if you have other antivirus software enabled by going to who's protecting me and click on manage providers. If you do have any other antivirus software, I would recommend disabling and uninstalling it as it can conflict with Windows's built-in antivirus and cause system slowdown or instability. Since on this PC I only have Windows Defender installed, I'm good to go. If I click on this button, I can do a quick scan on my PC for any malware and I'll just click it and let it do a quick scan right now. And the scan is finished and no threats were found, which is good news. Let's go to scan options and see what else is available. When I scroll down, we'll see that quick scan is selected by default. There's also full scan and it does say it can take longer than one hour. This is especially true if your PC is using a mechanical hard drive instead of a solid state drive. In custom scan, you can choose just specific files and folders you'd like to have scanned on your PC instead of the entire drive. And with the Microsoft Defender offline scan, there is some malware that cannot be detected and removed while the computer is running. So what this will do is reboot your computer and during the reboot process and before it loads Windows, it'll do a scan to see if there's any malware that can be removed. Now let's scroll down to virus and threat protection settings and click on manage settings. And I recommend that if any of these settings are disabled that you do click on them to toggle them on. And I'll just scroll down so you can look at what each option does. One that I would recommend users take a look at is this one called Controlled Folder Access. This is primarily made to defend against ransomware. It is a particularly malicious type of malware that will encrypt your files and folders and demand that you pay a ransom to the hacker who installed this malware. 
uh, otherwise you will lose access to your files forever and usually they demand payment by cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin because it is untraceable let's click on manage controlled folder access so what this will do is protect the files and folders you select from being modified by any unfriendly applications such as ransomware I'll just go here and toggle it on so we can see protected folders when I click on that we'll see these are the folders selected by default and you can always ch change this anytime you'd like then also a third one saying allow an app through controlled folder access and this will allow you to choose application that you like to read and write files in your protected folders and so Windows will only allow these applications to make changes and nothing else so this makes for a great protection against ransomware now I'm at the main page of the virus and threat protection category let me scroll down a little bit to virus and threat protection updates your virus protection is only as good as how updated your definitions are because every day there is a cat and mouse battle between virus developers and antivirus developers so if your computer is not updated against the latest viruses then your antivirus will be useless against new viruses that come out every day normally your computer will automatically update these definitions and in case they are uh, very outdated you can always click on check for updates and then update your definitions manually now that we're finished with this category, let's go back to the home page of Windows Security and I'm going to talk about the app and browser control category. Unlike the virus and threat protection category here, I am receiving a notice saying, caution, the setting to block potentially unwanted apps is turned off, your device may be vulnerable. So I'm going to turn it on. So now it says no action needed, so that issue has been resolved. And now let's click to dive into this category and we'll start first with reputation based protection settings and if any of these options are off I recommend that you click on them to toggle them on and I'll just scroll down so you can take a look at what they are now hit the back button and now let's go to isolated browsing keep in mind that this is only applicable if you're using Microsoft Edge as your web browser if you're using a different browser like Google Chrome then this will not apply to you and if any of these options are off I recommend you turn them on and I'll turn them on right now and then let's go to the last section which says exploit protection so let's go into the settings and make sure that all your default settings on are enabled so everything looks good here so I'll just hit the back button and that's it I've shown you how to make sure your computer is protected using Windows' own built-in Windows security app and their Windows Defender antivirus software. Now what I'm going to do is open up my Microsoft Edge web browser and show you the danger of how you can get malware onto your computer inadvertently through fake download buttons and links. I've now navigated my web browser to the official website of an application called 7-Zip. This website is 7-zip.org. I've covered this application before on my channel, and I highly recommend it for anyone who wants to compress their files. I myself have been using 7-zip for many years now, and I'm well aware that this is their official website and a safe place to download this software. However, for a more novice computer user, they may be tempted to go to google.com and then search for 7-zip download if they don't know what its official website is. So I did type that into Google and the very first result I get is to download 7-zip from a third-party website called Major Geeks, which I've opened up in this tab here. So I'm at Major Geeks' website at the download page for 7-zip and right here at the bottom I see a big green download button and a beginning computer user may think this is the button in which to download 7-zip. However, when I hover my mouse over it, at the bottom left you'll see it leads to googleadservices.com. Let me click it and see what happens. So it's opened up a pop-up ad and it's telling me again now here's an even bigger green download button and to download Windows 10 drivers. And I can guarantee that this will not download 7-zip and more than likely, so I'm going to ignore this and just exit out of this tab. You may be asking why these fake download buttons exist in the first place. Major Geeks themselves have been around since 2002 and they are a reputable website in which to download software. However, because this website 
offers all these downloads for free, they require ad revenue, such as from these, in order to stay alive. So what I would recommend to computer users is if you do go to these sort of websites, is to not click the very first download button you see. Instead, take the time to hover your mouse over these download buttons, look at the bottom left and see what URL they lead to. If they lead to a completely different website, then I would advise you to stay away. In addition, if at all possible, try to download your software from the vendor's official website. In the case of 7-Zip, it being 7-Zip.org. If you can't find the vendor's official website, I recommend two other third-party sources in which to find software. These being sourceforge.net and download.cnet.com. You'll see that both of these websites, just like Major Geeks, also have many ads, and they also require ad revenue in which to stay afloat. However, they seem to use higher quality ads, which are free from fake download links that could potentially install malware onto your PC. Aside from third-party websites like Major Geeks, which are a source of these fake download links, two other sources are adult websites as well as file sharing websites where you can obtain copyrighted materials for free. In other words, engaging in illegal file sharing. Now I'm going to navigate my web browser to one of these file sharing websites to show you how prevalent fake download buttons can be there as well. Now I've navigated my web browser to a website called Lime Torrents. This is a website in which to obtain torrents in which you can download copyrighted materials for free, such as movies and music, thus engaging in copyright infringement. This is something I do not condone in any way, shape, or form. The reason why I'm on this website is because there are many computer users who use these kinds of websites, and unfortunately, these websites are a great way to get fake download links in which to download malware onto your PC. So on Lime Torrents, I had earlier just typed in Batman movie in which to find torrents for Batman movies, and upon doing that, on my web browser, I receive two pop-up ads. One saying install required. So I'm getting a message here saying flash SD app required to proceed. Download ready free download. And I can guarantee, so I'm not going to touch anything here. And I received a similar pop-up ad here. And again, it looks very similar to this one. And again, I know that if I click the download button, it's extremely likely that I'll receive malware on my PC. My advice to computer users who are afraid of inadvertently getting malware from websites like these is to simply stop visiting these websites and refrain from engaging in any copyright infringement. Instead, to purchase all copyrighted material from legitimate sources such as Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. Now I've navigated my browser to a website called myonelogin.com. And I like this website because it's able to tell you the strength of a password simply by typing it in this dialog box below. Having a strong password is just about a necessity in today's computing environment. And many websites and services require you to have a strong password before proceeding any further. You probably know that to have a strong password is to have a long password. But sometimes the password length alone isn't enough for it to be a strong one. I'm going to type in a password right now, and immediately it's telling me that it is a very weak password. You may think this is just a random jumble of letters, but if you look on your computer's keyboard, this is actually all the letters on the first top row. And so it's telling me that my password is very weak because it is a common password. Now let me try to type in the second row of letters on my keyboard and see what happens. So now it's went from very weak to still just weak and it can still be cracked in a very short amount of time. But lastly, let me put in the third row of letters on my keyboard, and now it's been upgraded to medium. But six hours is still not a very long time, and this password can still be cracked. You'll see it's extremely long, but it's all of the letters on my keyboard, which many hackers may know as a pattern, which can be easily broken. So now I'm going to show you that I can have a much shorter password, but yet it'll be much stronger than this one. A good piece of advice is to not try to make a password, but instead a passphrase. So I'm going to type in one right now. 
It says, I like to eat candy, but it's only medium and it can be cracked in about 35 hours. But now I'm just going to make a few modifications. I'm going to make some misspellings on purpose. Now you'll see it's jumped all the way to very strong and it'll take 14 centuries. And just for good measure, I'm going to add a number and symbol to this passphrase. So now it's jumped up to 68,000 years. It says, I like to eat candy too, exclamation mark. So this is an example of an extremely strong password. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video today. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. And also, please hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'll be creating more content like this in the near future. Again, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Hello. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so by clicking on the subscribe link below. Also write your comments in the comment section below. Spread the word. You can share this video with your friends by clicking on the share button below. And you can share it with uh, WhatsApp, with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and by sending email to your friends.